This is the video about the boring bar that I needed for the ITS head to machine the titanium parts I'm working on. The first tool here is the CNMG 432 insert. And here I'm coming very close to the jaw, so I was being a little careful when I push feed hold. That's the reason it kind of hesitates there. But I wasn't really happy with these shavings, the way they were coming off the tool. I wasn't really breaking them properly, so I stopped here and I indexed to a different insert to try it. Thought maybe a different chip breaker or something might work better. I don't have a lot of inserts for steel because I don't just don't machine a lot of steel, just plain steel. Most of my inserts are for you know more exotic materials like stainless steel and inconel titanium, things like that. So I don't really have the proper geometry for this type of material. So I was sort of hunting out an insert. Didn't really like that one either. Change it to this, um, I believe this last one was an Iskar insert. And it usually works sort of alright on steel. But it really wasn't working too much better than the others. But I just let it run. It's only one part I'm making here, so, you know, not that big of a deal. I just didn't want a bunch of water shavings coming off of there and catching on the camera or something like that. Which almost happened there, you can see it. This material has a... I'm not exactly sure of the heat treat of it. It was a drop over by the saw. And it's kind of hard. And you'll see with this finishing tool, I was running a little bit high surface footage here which is kind of hard to do on this big machine that small a diameter. But then uh, I had to... Um, I kind of stood off of this offset here because I wanted to run a um, sort of deep finish pass. I want to go to um, 1.2 inches. It's about 15 thousandths big right now. And if you run too small a finish pass in steels, a lot of times it won't leave a nice finish. Although in this heat treated material it probably wouldn't have been a problem. So it's taken about 15 thousandths off the diameter for this finish cut. And then I got to mic it again and I was pretty pretty good on the diameter. It was a little big out on the end there. But this is just a boring bar. It doesn't really matter that much. Here I'm milling a flat and, I, and that collet chuck is that's why I'm kind of the program kind of jumps there because I'm pushing feed hold because it was very close to that jaw. You can't really tell in the video, but it didn't want to hit the nut on the jaw. I'm just milling the bevels on the end of the bar here. Half inch fork loop carbide end mill. The flat for the other uh, on the round part is for indicating it on the second operation for this to maintain alignment. This tool was, uh, when I was touching it off here, it was hitting on those screws on the bottom. And in the next view, you can see it there. The screws actually project out a little further, so I had to get out beyond the screw there. And then I jogged the tool down half the uh, width of the insert and kind of eyeballing it here to see if it's where I think it is. It's sort of important that these V grooves I'm going to put in here are centered on the bar because that will maintain the insert, the, the cartridge that bolts on there centered on the um, center line of the bar. I think if I remember right, these serrations on this ITS uh, cartridge that bolts on here are two and a half millimeters apart. I didn't have, normally I'd do this with a thread mill and do it all in one pass, but I didn't have a thread mill with a two and a half millimeter pitch, so I did it that way. And the, the reason these tools coming up for so long is they're left over from the previous setup that I was doing on the, the well prep on the titanium part. And they happen to be the right size tools for this, so I just use them. Normally I wouldn't run a tool that long just to do this. 
and this drill wasn't the right size, I had to change it for the the five mm the the screw holding the ins the cartridge on, I should say, is a five millimeter by 0.8 pitch. So that's the tap drill. And then here's a thread mill to mill that thread for this screw. That's that. I gotta try it with the thread gauge. So that seems okay. I'm test fit this cartridge on here. So that's the standard, um, one of the standard cartridges you can buy for the ITS boring system. But as, you, as you'll see here when I pull the part out, the chuck, the cartridge is a little bit longer than I need. I'm going to have to mill off the back end of it. And this next segment in the video is me. This is a, a smaller bar I have for that ITS head. And I just bolt this cartridge on here and I'm going to mill off the back of it. Otherwise it would hit in the bore that I'm going to do with that bar. I have to take about an eighth of an inch off the back of this here. I'm just doing this manually by jogging the end mill down and rotating the c-axis with the hand wheel on the control you know rather than making a whole program just to do this one thing it's easier to do this that's that same half inch carbide end mill I, I started the other end of the part with Just gonna put a chamfer on the end of the cartridge. It's not really necessary, it just makes me feel better to look at a chamfer. So now we're gonna set up on the other end of this part to mill the dovetail slot and you're going to see why I put that flat on the first operation so so that I could indicate it in and everything would be running parallel to those notches that hold the cartridge in alignment on the other end of the bar so first I'm going to indicate the run out kind of adjust this chuck get the run out reasonable Then I indicate the flat and set my C axis zero. So that looks pretty good. And here's the process of setting the actual offset on the control. say teach zero when you hit reset it updates the display there you see I'm gonna put the hammer um, probe in here and, and uh, set my Z zero on the back side of that turn diameter the turn face I guess you'd say and I know what I, the thickness I want there, so I set it here. It's pretty much the same thing, except you tell it a dimension you want to teach it. That's, that's in in the z-axis, and then it sets it the zero out in the front of the part. Right there, see we're set at minus 6, 0 .4655. I'm just cutting off that little left, um, bit left by the saw because my program didn't allow for that. So just, just roughing off the face. And then finish the face. Same turning tools that we used on the other end. We 
gonna mill away the OD that's got to be flattened on both sides down to the 1.2 inch diameter of the bar. This is just sort of one of those um, adaptive type of milling cycles. You come in and do the angles for the dovetail. The dovetail, coincidentally, on on the ITS heads isn't exactly uh, 45. It's like 41 degrees on each side. So you have to. But it's not a problem with the B axis. It's the first test bit. I kind of stayed off. Didn't want to cut it too small. So I um, set the diameter of the end mill larger than I thought was necessary. And I um, re-ran the tool here to cut it down to size. Just didn't want to get, get it undersized because then it wouldn't clamp properly on that IPS head the way the clamping mechanism works. It's taking cuts that aren't really necessary there, but it's easier than just trying to separate them, just to run the whole tool again. Now it fits the way I want, want it to. So when you tighten those three screws, it flexes that side in and it clamps it. That's the way that tool works. You can adjust, you can rough adjust the diameter on that head out to where you, it's easiest to do it on the tool setter so you can kind of see it on the um, optical comparator of my tool setter and you adjust it, you get it roughly adjusted. I usually adjust the head about 10 thousandths undersized, then when I run the tool I can adjust it out. So there it is mounted on the head, on the shank, although I've ordered some shorter shanks than this one for the Capto to um, the ITS shank it's some proprietary shank that they use on their head but they don't I had to make this bar because they don't make a standard bar like this the way I wanted I wanted a little bit heavier bar to go into these holes I'm boring I, I explained that in a previous video so that's it for this video thanks for watching